That music sure is like a fine red wine. But man, it's been a while since we've seen a game headed by Bioware's Edmonton office. Baldur's Gate, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Mass Effect, just really genre-defining games. They were also games which looked to take advantage of some of the best engine technology available at the time of their release, whether that was the Aurora engine or Unreal Engine 3. So while Anthem looks to depart from more traditional Bioware games and their purely single-player focus, the constant use of a strong and proven engine technology remains true here, this time with EA and DICE's Frostbite engine. This is not the first time, of course, that the studio has used the Frostbite engine, as Dragon Age Inquisition in late 2014 broke that ground, but that was now almost four years ago, and a lot has changed since then in the engine. Just a cursory glance at this 4K gameplay footage provided by EA reveals some of the awesome strides in the engine, and how Anthem takes advantage of them. A year ago at its initial reveal, I had my doubts as to whether certain segments were actually representative of the quality we would see later on closer to release. I'll have to wait for the release version to quell my curiosity there, but it's frostbite in the end, and it always manages to shine. Something that this trailer shows off in spades. Getting to the brass tacks of this trailer, we at DF were initially pretty perplexed after taking a long and hard look at it, wondering which platform the game is actually being played on here. Not just because we see some aliasing here or there, or because screen space reflections seem to be disabled for 99% of the trailer, but because the footage looks to be rendering actually at a checkerboarded 3840 by 2160 and is presented at 30 FPS. Zooming into the image, you can see those typical vertical and sometimes horizontal sawtooth edges that we we've come to associate with a lot of image reconstruction techniques this generation. Going through many of the trailer scenes, this pattern revealed itself again and again on many surfaces, and this gave us the initial impression that the game was perhaps running on Xbox One X hardware. Checkerboarded 4K is essentially that midway point between 800C or checkerboarded resolution we saw in Mass Effect Andromeda on the PS4 Pro, and a full unadulterated 4K that we would really expect to see in PC footage. We know from Frostbite technical presentations that the checkerboard implementation in the engine relies upon API and hardware features which are not universal across the PC landscape, especially under DX11. So checkerboard artifacts here, being in PC footage, do not align with our expectations. From our very own John Linneman, we likewise know that the 1080 Ti SLI powered presentation on the E3 show floor had screen space reflections and was perhaps even running in excess of 60 FPS. So we are understandably confused here when EA confirmed to us that this trailer here is comprised of PC footage being played with an Xbox One controller. Does this mean that the PC version supports checkerboard rendering? Is it some kind of bug in the post-process pipeline? Are EA maybe trying to show off the game here at console-like quality settings? No idea here, but I think it's safe to say that the quality visuals on display in this year's trailer and last year's, combined with Bioware's previous use of checkerboarding on consoles and their penchant for targeting 30 FPS, means we're looking at a game here where the base assets, view distances, and the inclusion of specific Frostbite engine features are built around targeting a decidedly higher frame time than we have seen in other Frostbite games, like Battlefront or the Battlefield series. I say this though, a target 30 FPS has yet to be officially confirmed for consoles. Nonetheless, this priority on high quality assets and effects are something that this trailer shows off quite well. Like here, in the opening cutscene in the mobile command base, the density of geometry inside the immediate environment is seriously impressive. Characters in particular shine as they showcase lots of additional detail fleshed out with real geometry. Like look here at this belt on this tattooed character here. Look how the individual buttons are round and nicely modeled. The indoor environment in which this is situated in is similarly filled with tons of tiny insignificant knickknacks, all having nicely rounded edges and modeled out gubbins. Like look here how the wires and hooks hanging from the ceiling are in fact real 3D geometry. Or look here how the insignificant clutter located to the left and right of the camera action are in fact fully fleshed out models. Sure, it's just an enclosed and controlled space, but even really superfluous things the team could have left as being just flat textures have a nice 3D roundness to them. Like here, look at how rounded and plausible the inside of the mech suit looks. Completely unnecessary detail that I really appreciate. I definitely think this game's presumably 30 FPS target is being put to great use to give this extra level of polish and detail to the game's assets. Alongside the model detail up close, this initial cutscene also shows off some of the heights of post-processing to expect in the game. Unlike Mass Effect Andromeda or any of the other 
other Frostbite games on console before it, Anthem looks to be using a rather nice looking, high quality bokeh depth of field to highlight foreground objects such as character facial animations. Usually this effect was reserved for the PC release, such as in Andromeda, or it was maybe not used in any version of the game at all in Frostbite releases. And like any game with a filmic presentation worth its salt, Bioware also managed to find the frame time budget to cram in some chromatic aberration there for good measure. Oh yes, chromatic aberration. Beyond this post-processing, the game is also utilizing an impressive number of shadow casting light sources here in this cutscene. I counted at least four lights in the scene casting shadows at any given moment, and as trivial as this sounds, shadow casting lights are really crucial for giving characters that all too needed three point lighting setup to show off the detail in the asset and make their skin look believable. While that's not particularly special in comparison to other games targeting 30 FPS this generation necessarily, it's one of the first few times we've actually seen Frostbite in particular being pushed to these quality levels in real time, as Battlefront 2's cutscenes were pre-rendered primarily, and other in-engine sequences in Frostbite games often have to worry about maintaining that hard to achieve 60 FPS target. In the end though, this is still just a tiny indoor area of the game with a closeness and intimacy you would expect more of a traditional Bioware RPG. But Anthem is not that at its core. Following interviews with game developers, we know that the overwhelming proportion of the game's content will be found outside of your home base, while you are traversing an open gameplay environment with three other characters joining in online. As the trailer's main character gets suited up and goes outside to roam the open world section of the game after selecting a mission objective, the trailer treats us with some pretty spectacular views of the game world, showcasing the benefits of that 30 FPS target in stark detail. While large view distances are rather common in Frostbite games on this console generation, the density of the vegetation seen here, the distance at which shadows are rendered, as well as the general unintrusive nature of level of detail switching, is rather impressive. As the mechs are flying around the overgrown jungle environments here at high speeds, my eyes actually had a pretty hard time finding much, if really any, pop in our stark level of detail changes between objects. Here's where I usually get kind of nervous and wonder a bit, oh, what kind of PC are they actually showing this off on? Knowing that it's PC footage here explains that, but I did happen to find some grass being drawn in on a couple of scenes, like here near these eggs as the player camera gets closer. So level of detail drawing in is there, it's just rather well hidden in this trailer due to the color palettes, lighting, camera angles, and probably also due to some genuine great asset management and swapping at the engine and art level. Alongside these long view distances and generally greatly handed LOD transitions shown in the trailer, the game manages to keep objects in the overworld here up to a really high quality standard even up close. As I highlighted in last week's video covering the PC alpha of Battlefield 5, Anthem is making heavy use of displacement-based tessellation on ground surfaces. So rocks look generally rounded and other small ground detail looks to be rendered with the technique, making the terrain appear naturally dense and without that typical flatness you could perhaps see in other games which just use plain textures for the ground terrain. On top of this real 3D ground here, the vegetation is also not found wanting, with the quality here being right up there with other 30 FPS titles we've seen this generation. There's that waxy Fresnel sheen on the front light facing surface of the leaves. Leaves are densely packed and individually modeled. There's also uniquely rendered mossy looking greenery, as well as all showcasing real translucency, where the light and shadows hitting it cast through to the other side. And all of this foliage looks to cast shadows well into the distance even, making the green parts of this world look connected with the ground instead of just wispily floating over it. The quality and density of the foliage here really communicates that old, overgrown, and abandoned world aesthetic I think the team is going for here. Though it does make me curious what this will end up looking like on the base consoles here, such as Xbox One or the normal PS4, as they have not had the best track record necessarily in terms of vegetation and level of detail rendering distances this generation, so that remains to be seen. On top of these more readily visible elements, the game also has a handful of neat visual tricks in the gameplay trailer that were more rarely seen in 60fps frostbite titles this generation on consoles. Like here in the cinematic entrance into the dungeon midway through the trailer, we can see how the water geometrically ripples around the mechs as they emerge from below. Likewise, the lighting gets a nice upgrade over other 60fps frostbite titles as Anthem here seems to be utilizing that Frustum voxel volumetric fog 
and lighting that has been in frostbite for a few years now. Although it's not 100% readily visible in every scene, nor does it reach that fine granularity as shown in the original 2017 footage of the game, it is definitely there and it really gives this dungeon cave section of the trailer that extra layer of thickness in the air. And speaking of volumetrics, one thing that I'm curious as to how they are doing it comes across in the very last part of the trailer. See, while Frostbite has some awesome particle shadows, as well as some well-done GPU particles, the shading on the particles themselves has always been a bit inaccurate to my eye, and not completely reflective of the environment lighting around them. I'm not sure what the exact reason for this is, perhaps only certain artist-tagged particles can receive shadow maps, or maybe the 60fps Frostbite games have used more simplistic lighting for transparencies. But generally, transparent surfaces in Frostbite games have not been as awesomely shaded as the rest of the opaque surfaces found in games. It is different in Anthem here though from what I can see. As the player group here targets the Tyranid clone's weak points for massive damage, you can see how the shadow cast from the creature casts onto and permeates the semi-transparent spider webs and eggs surrounding it, making it look awesomely grounded in the game world's lighting and giving it that convincing, puffy, volumetric look that your eye expects, I think. I'm not sure how they're doing it necessarily here, perhaps local fog volumes or something? No idea, but it looks really great. While that which is there on screen is awesome looking in the trailer, the only real disappointments visually come from things that are missing. Even though this is PC footage, there seems to be some corners cut, perhaps to more closely mimic what the consoles will deliver. Alongside the aforementioned checkerboard rendering, screen space reflections are curiously missing from any and all surfaces in the gameplay trailer. None of the water surfaces shown in the gameplay segments have any reflections other than what is presumably an environment map. So I initially thought this would just be for water surfaces, since your mech would constantly be obscuring the water in front of the player view, making reflections bug in and out of existence since they would only be rendered in screen space. But then I also noticed how there are other more shiny opaque metal surfaces here lacking interreflections, or how some surfaces showcase light leakage, as in light from behind them, by just rendering their reflections using cube maps. So screen space reflections here are not in in any form in this trailer. Well, except for the first five seconds. Wait, wait what? Well here I think the first five seconds of the trailer showcase screen space reflections as it is either pre-rendered or stitched in video from some other version of the game. These first five seconds are also notably missing any of the checkerboarding artifacts we saw earlier, and it also displays a lot more macro blocking than found in other parts of the trailer. So perhaps this is just a segment to hide loading in the game itself, but it's nonetheless a strange inconsistency. Vegetation, in spite of how greatly it is rendered, I think is another area where we see the hardware demands affecting their in-game representation. The vegetation itself does not move or interact with the world too much. Other than some default swaying animations and the occasional bush that moves as a mech goes by and through it, the vegetation itself does not seem to react as much to the mayhem ensuing around it. Perhaps it's there, but the trailer doesn't show any real destructible bits in the game world, such as overpressure from explosions causing the foliage to jiggle or bend around. So you don't see cover being broken up, or the game world rapidly changing due to your interactions with it. So while everything is beautifully rendered, it lacks a certain level of interactivity. Oh, and that awesome rippling water I mentioned earlier in that one transitional cutscene? Well that appears to be just limited to that one scene itself. Water surfaces in the gameplay are more or less completely flat or static, with just having a splash particle effect pop up when objects intersect with their surface. With that being said, I'm still very impressed with the game as it looks right now, and I'm really happy to see Bioware so wholly take advantage of Frostbite, leveraging its strengths and rendering. And as for the extent to which this footage represents console or indeed the final PC version, well that really remains to be seen, and I look forward to finding out. So what do you think here? Are there any areas in Anthem's rendering you found particularly neat or unique? I may have an eye for these things, but another set or two is always appreciated. And with that being said, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, consider hitting that little bell button in the corner to be immediately notified with each new video we put out. If you want to talk about the amazingness of Mass Effect soundtrack, or just other rendering things in general, write and follow Digital Foundry and me on Twitter. As always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.